USS Alaska surged ahead, ready to confront an innovative German pocket battleship in the cold waters of the Atlantic. The behemoth Alaska, envisioned as the ultimate German commerce raider destroyer, was armed with nine 12-inch guns, 12 5-inch guns, and a top speed of 33 knots, striking the perfect balance between firepower and speed. Her opponent, although smaller, was still a fearsome foe who had earned a reputation for her perfect blend of firepower, armor, speed, and her thirst for destroying commerce ships and severely damaging ships that could not keep up with her. As the main batteries from both ships thundered with even accuracy, Alaska began maneuvering through the waves, evading the enemy salvos while unleashing a relentless barrage. The odds were evenly matched, and American and German sailors sought to outsmart each other. Alaska had more firepower, but the pocket battleship had better armor. But only one ship could emerge victorious. During the tense buildup to the Imperial Japanese Navy assault on Pearl Harbor in December 1941, the United States Navy raced to assemble a fleet to confront both the German Kriegsmarine in the Atlantic and the Empire of the Rising Sun in the Pacific. Concerns loomed over the possibility of facing both adversaries simultaneously, particularly if the Allies fell before America officially entered the global conflict. Despite prior naval construction bills making it through an isolationist American Congress in the 1930s, it was not until the Germans swiftly overran France and the Japanese menaced American territories across the Pacific that the government finally acted and approved the Navy's fleet buildup. The turning point came on July 19, 1940, with the passage of the Vincent Walsh Act, better known as the Two Ocean Navy Act. This pivotal legislation immediately bolstered the U.S. Navy fleet by over 70% and authorized the construction of 257 ships. The most notable provisions were plans for 18 aircraft carriers, 7 battleships, and 6 Alaska-class cruisers. However, following the devastating aerial strikes by the Japanese at Pearl Harbor, the focus on constructing battleships was drastically reduced. In the end, only 4 Iowa-class, 4 South Dakota-class, and none of the Montana-class ships under construction were pressed into service after December 7, 1941. The Japanese attack on Hawaii signaled the twilight era of the once mighty and powerful battleships. Their light was quickly fading as technology and sea warfare evolved and favored the aircraft carrier as the core of all major naval fleets of the time. Amid this transition, the fate of the six Alaska-class cruisers hung in the balance. Nonetheless, the U.S. Navy was still figuring out how to deal with the enemy navies that threatened American shores from both sides of the continent. The Alaska-class cruiser was the only response to counter it. The impetus to develop the Alaska cruiser class was directly related to the rise of Germany's rearmament of the 1930s. Following Hitler's political triumph and the creation of the Third Reich, the legendary German Kriegsmarine was born anew after the humiliation it had suffered as part of the 1919 Treaty of Versailles. This treaty, along with the Washington Naval Agreements of 1922, severely limited the growth of the German Navy. The once mighty Prussian Empire had ceased to exist, and its navy had been completely dismantled. However, the Fuhrer swiftly mustered the national economy and negotiated with the victors to allow his naval forces to grow, albeit with some limitations. For instance, all the major world powers, including the United States, United Kingdom, Italy, France, and Japan, had agreed to a 10,000-ton displacement limit for heavy cruiser construction. In addition, the post-war heavy cruisers could only be fitted with the main armament of 8-inch guns. In addition to these restrictions, Germany was prohibited from having vessels that could become direct competitors to the victorious nations. As always, the Kriegsmarine found a way to turn the tables around and developed a series of fast but heavily armed cruisers dubbed pocket battleships by the British Royal Navy. Known as the Deutschland-class cruisers by the Kriegsmarine, the pocket battleships rose to prominence for their combination of size, speed, and firepower earning them a unique status in naval warfare. These ships were relatively compact compared to traditional battleships, but boasted significant firepower. Armed with six 11-inch guns, they packed a considerable punch and outmatched many other cruisers of their time. Despite their classification as cruisers, they had the speed and agility of smaller warships. This attribute allowed them to outmaneuver larger battleships while posing a threat to smaller enemy vessels. While not as heavily armored as battleships, they still possessed decent protection, with armored belts to defend against enemy attacks, making them harder to sink than typical cruisers. Furthermore, the German pocket battleships were designed for long-range missions. They could cover significant distances, 
contributing to their versatility in naval operations. Due to their unique characteristics, pocket battleships were often used for commerce raiding, targeting enemy merchant shipping, posing a considerable threat to Allied convoys, disrupting supply lines, and causing havoc in naval logistics. In response to these intermediate warships between the larger battleships and smaller heavy cruisers, the U.S. Navy launched the Alaska class. However, the development of this new ship type remained on the drawing board until the Navy reacted to rumors about Japan constructing its own supercruisers. While not an American state at its inception, the American Navy created this unique class of warships and named them after its territory, Alaska. The planned roster of six vessels was to be christened after American territories or insular areas. The decision to name the cruisers after these territories was somewhat symbolic. Just like these portions of land that were neither a colony nor a state from the Union, these vessels were neither battleships nor conventional cruisers. Instead, they marked a pioneering, unexplored territory in warship design. While naval doctrine from the time established the cruisers were tasked with escorting fast carrier task forces and protecting them from any surface threats, the Alaska-class cruiser was envisioned with a different purpose. These American battle cruisers were born explicitly to counter the German Kriegsmarine's pocket battleships, and the rumored battle cruisers the Imperial Japanese Navy was secretly, allegedly developing to expand over the Pacific. Thus, the Alaska-class cruisers emerged as an American defensive response to protect the continental U.S. from enemy incursions in the Atlantic and maintain American possessions in the South Pacific. Although envisioned to neutralize the Teutonic pocket battleships and commerce raiders, the Alaska-class battlecruisers lacked the necessary armor protection to take the fight head-on against battleships and heavier vessels. President Franklin D. Roosevelt, who had been involved with the Navy during World War I, became an avid supporter of the new American battlecruiser, firmly believing they would set a new standard for power and speed among the world's military vessels. In the domain of American heavy cruisers, the stalwart Baltimore class was the essence of naval power, armed with a versatile array of weaponry, nine eight-inch guns, 12 five-inch guns, and 24 20-millimeter guns. However, the Alaska class was a breed apart. Enormous in size at 808 feet and weighing over 29,000 tons, these vessels redefined American naval capability. Sporting nine 12-inch guns, 12 5-inch guns, 56 40mm guns, and 34 20mm guns represented a leap in firepower and scale. The Alaska-class cruisers were designed as cruiser killers, built to deliver a devastating blow swiftly and make a dashing exit before the enemy could counterattack or receive support. Employing the same machinery as the Essex aircraft carriers, Alaska boasted a top speed of 33 knots, providing them with impressive agility and potency. However, this unparalleled speed and firepower came with trade-offs. While their armored protection was adequate against enemy cruisers, they proved vulnerable against battleships due to the absence of a robust torpedo defense system. This greatly exposed them to the constant threat of attacks by German U-boats and the feared Japanese Type 93 Long Lance torpedoes. The Alaska battle cruisers were not classified as CA or heavy cruisers, but CB, which stood for large cruisers. The class's lead ship, USS Alaska, was ordered in September 1940 and laid down in late December 1941. While under construction, the US Navy drew preliminary ideas to convert the ship to an aircraft carrier due to its similarities to the Essex aircraft carriers. Still, the idea was dropped by the time Alaska had been completed. The battlecruiser was commissioned late in the war, in June 1944, when its unique features and capabilities were no longer suited for the war in the Atlantic. The Royal Navy and other U.S. Navy vessels had long neutralized the pocket battleship threat. USS Alaska joined the Pacific Theater in February 1945. Although she arrived during the last months of the conflict, her combat contributions were impactful, despite no longer being viable for her intended role. She was tasked with escorting carrier task forces due to her immense firepower and size as part of Task Group 58.4. She initially supported the crucial assault on Iwo Jima and safeguarded carriers for 19 days before resupplying at Oliti Island. During the Battle of Okinawa, Alaska formed part of the protective screen for carriers Yorktown and Intrepid. However, her true combat moment came when Japanese airstrikes targeted the fleet. Alaska's anti-aircraft gunners successfully thwarted a Yokosuka P-1Y bomber's attempt to crash into Intrepid. Following the damage to the carrier Franklin, Alaska was assigned to escort her back to Uliti, 
witnessing further aerial assaults, but suffering only minor injuries among the crew. Shortly after, Alaska became a fighter director, coordinating the interception and destruction of the Kawasaki Ki-45 fighter. Rejoining Task Group 58.4, she continued shielding carriers during the Okinawa Campaign in March 1945. USS Alaska, alongside her sister ship USS Guam and other vessels, engaged in shore bombardment at Minami Daito before supporting the Okinawa landings. In a series of successful aerial skirmishes, she shot down multiple Japanese aircraft, displaying her heavy anti-aircraft capabilities and repelling several kamikaze air attacks. After resupplying Iruliti in May 1945, Alaska joined Task Group 38.4 and returned to the Okinawa area to bolster American anti-aircraft defenses. Moving to San Pedro Bay for maintenance, she later formed part of Cruiser Task Force 95, conducting sweeps into the Yellow and East China Seas. Engaging in multiple raids and shipping missions, Alaska's war efforts earned her three battle stars, marking her significant contribution to the Pacific Theater during the last months of World War II. In September 1945, Alaska and her sister ship Guam became part of the occupation forces in Japan. She then joined Operation Magic Carpet to repatriate American troops scattered around the Pacific, transporting soldiers from Incheon to San Francisco. By February 1946, she reached New Jersey and was placed in reserve, later arriving at the Boston Navy Yard in December. In August 1946, the ship was removed from active service and decommissioned in February 1947. In 1958, proposals to convert Alaska into a guided missile cruiser employing an American version of the German V-2 rocket were deemed too expensive, with studies estimating costs at $160 million. Consequently, the conversion plan was ditched, and in June 1960, the ship was sold to Luria Brothers for scrap. Ultimately, only Alaska and Guam were built, out of the intended six battlecruisers the U.S. Navy sought to join the American fleet. Despite its impressive features and blend of firepower and speed, the Alaska class arrived too late to shine against the German commerce raiders or Japan's never-developed battlecruisers.